when the tribes are united as one under the Malkitzedic Joseph administration. When the kingdom split, did Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, did they call themselves Israel? They never attempted to call themselves Israel, did they? Why? Because they knew they couldn't, so they picked the name Judah after the most powerful of the three southern tribes. Joseph, the rightful Malkitzedek, will always be persecuted by his brothers. They will want to throw him and discard him and not listen to her word, he says. That's the Malkitzedek administration. But the rightful Malkitzedek is Joseph, and he is going to be restored to rulership once he's purged of his Gentile pagan tendencies. And that's what Yahweh is doing with us, right? He is purging us of our Gentile pagan tendencies, and he's saying, join a priesthood, not a denomination. To be the theocratic governing tribe during the millennial under the Malkitzedek order. You see, the vast majority of Jews today are not descendants of Abraham at all. They're not Jews, in other words. Most of them who call themselves Jews today are, in fact, Gentile converts to Judaism from Khazaria in the Arabian Peninsula. You see, many people don't realize because today they say, you know, many of the so-called Jews will say, well, don't, no proselytizing. We're not a proselytizing religion. Have you ever heard that? Oh, the Christians, they proselytize all the time. But Judaism, we don't proselytize. Well, that's only because you bowed to the anti-proselytizing laws of the third century of the Christians. But because before the third century, Judaism was a hugely proselytizing religion. It's only because the rabbis bowed to the laws of anti-proselytizing that the Christians invented in the third century that today they don't proselytize. But before the third century, the Jews and Judaism was the grandest of proselytizing religions. Under the Hasmonean dynasty, there was mass proselytizing and conversion all the way up to the fourth century when the rabbinical Jews bowed to the power of of Christianity and its non-conversion laws. Where did the the Edomite people come from? Herod, he was an Edomite, right? They were proselytized by the Jews. Philo, the Jew. The Septuagint was the word for the proselyte, right? It was written in Greek because the Jews were a proselytizing religion and a proselytizing people. Judaism and Hellenism, Philo the Jew, he didn't speak Hebrew, not Aramaic, he spoke Greek. Septuagint was for the proselyte. You see, the Khazarian kingdom was the last kingdom actually to be converted to Judaism in the 8th century. And this is beyond dispute, Turkic in origin. Think about the Yemenite Jews. Those of you have heard of the Yemenite Jews, right? How did all the... Arabians in Yemen get converted to Judaism if there was no proselytizing, right? They were proselytized in the Arabian Peninsula. It led to the astonishing conversion of the entire kingdom in the south, the Himerite kingdom, today known as Yemen. And then people will try and play the Sephardic Jew card. Well, I'm a Sephardic Jew. All they need is a Hispanic last name. And the uh, next thing you know, Bob's your uncle. They're Sephardic Jews. Well, let's examine who, who, who really are the Sephardic Jews. They are primarily descendants of Arabs, Berbers, and Europeans that converted to Judaism in the 12th century. The Berbers who, again, took part in the Arab conquests of Spain were, in fact, Judaizers. You see, Yitzhak Baer and Ben Zion Dinur are historians at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And again, they conclude there was no forced expulsion after the destruction of the Second Temple. Talmudic Judaism, the state of Israel and Zionism, my friends, are in fact counterfeits of the true messianic faith and the true theocratic state 
that Moshiach is king of. You see, modern Zionism inspired the eventual creation of the counterfeit that we now have in our midst, the state of Israel, which has a man as its secular prime minister. Whereas the only true Israel has Moshiach Yahushua as its king, right? There are so many believers that have been duped, simply been duped into supporting an anti-Yahushua counterfeit. They're supporting a state run by a racially driven clique who loathes Yahushua and they blaspheme the true Moshiach. It's so sad. You see, Etz Benai Yosef want you to believe that the existence of the Israeli state is proof that biblical prophecy is being fulfilled. That's what they want you to believe. Their adherents are prophesying timelines. They're prophesying calendars. They're prophesying the second coming. Ideas are all based upon what? The incorrect assumption that the state of Israel is biblical Israel and a misreading of the book of Ezekiel, which was part one of this teaching, which will affect your whole eschatology. You misread Ezekiel and all of a sudden you're going to end up with some Hebraic Christian Zionism theology that you've just carried over from the church with you. And then you Hebraic it up and everybody goes along with it. And you do a little bit of gypsy dancing and wave flags and people go along. Because they don't even look into the background of Davidic dancing. We've done a whole teaching on that. Gypsy dancing to destruction. I was genuinely asked by a beloved sister to look into Benai Etz Yosef. Because it was circulating around this congregation. So I did. And as I do with all things... I count the cost, but I always choose wherever it takes me. I will speak the truth. That's what I do. And that makes me like Marmite, as I say often. (laughs) But don't bring something up to me and not expect me to do my due diligence. Because I've earned the respect to stand up here amongst you all and teach because I believe that you trust that I will do that. And that's what I do. So that I can sleep at night and so that I can raise my family and ultimately stand before the king and know, you know, that's what they said. But when I read your scripture and then when I started to go back further and further, it wasn't quite so. So then I either shut my mouth and be a coward or I stand up and I speak the truth and it lies where it lies. I count the cost. You need to count the cost. Giliana, Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. And to the teaching overseer of the Israelite congregation in Smyrna, write, these things says the first and the last, who was dead and is alive. I know your mitzvot and tribulation and poverty, but you are rich and I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews and are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan, the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things that you shall suffer. See, Satan shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be faithful to death. And I will give you the keys and the crown of life. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23. This says Yahuwah Sevot. In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the Sitziot, of him that is a Yahudi, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that Elohim is with you. And the question I always ask is this, should a returning non-Jew 
take hold of a Jew who hasn't experienced the promise of biblically ordained.